<laughs> what do you see out of North Texas now that you have some game tape to uh, watch? Yeah, I mean, I think you see they kind of picked up where they left off finishing last season with a lot of momentum, and more importantly, they have an identity. Like, they know who they are on both sides of the ball. They're very physical. They play extremely hard on offense. They can really run the football on defense. They can really stop the run and keep everything in front of them. And, you know, when you're 6-1 and one in your last seven games playing home with a lot of momentum, uh, got an older quarterback who is playing really well. So I think, um, you know, they've got a game under their belt. You could see in their game, you know, first games are hard. You get a lot of the kinks out early. They were able to do that and find a way to win, and so they've kind of got that that part out of the way. So we're going to have to play really well. I know two deeps are in religious Bible, um, but obviously a lot of fours next to the offensive line. Yeah. I guess is that a group that you feel you know for sure who your five are going to be and that would be pretty? We, we think so. I mean, some of the oars are because of guys being banged up through camp, so it's kind of like until we get to the game, we don't really know maybe who's going to be available. We mm -hmm. think we do. Um, and I'll say this too, I mean, or sometimes could mean, look, both guys are going to play. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it may mean, you know, in the first couple of games, until you get guys in game situations, you're not 100% sure because some guys react differently to game and practice. So uh, as the year goes on, there'll be less oars. It's not a, a way to cop out. It's just we do feel like we have some depth at a lot of positions, though, which helps. Mm -hmm. What did Sam Westfall do to, you know, earn a starting job in, in camp? Yeah, I think the defensive coaches, especially Coach Henley and them, uh, just felt like he was the most consistent guy. You know, and he should be. He's an older guy. He's played a lot of ball. Um, but, it, you know, between him and Armani and I know Jahari, all three of those guys have, have, uh, have been steady. Uh, and then you got KD and some of the young guys as well. So we're going to play a lot of guys, but I think they just felt like he was very steady. You've had an up-tempo offense since eighth grade. Do you know how to slow down offensively? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you, don't, if you don't make first downs, you don't go very fast. So, um, you know, We'll, we'll, we'll play at the pace we need to play to try to win. You know, the, the game dictates that. But just like, you know, that's what we want our identity to be. There's not a big secret there. Um, so tempo's a, just a big part of kind of who we are. Mm -hmm. That seems to it, that would be the aggress Like, that's what you want. You want to be the aggressor. Yeah. Offense. Yeah, I, th I think, look, on offense, defense, it's always a chess match. You know, defense is trying to take away what you do best and dictate things to you, and you're trying to dictate to them. And so – you know, tempo and, and how we play is one of the ways we try to do that. But in a good football game, it goes back and forth. And um, But, again, the biggest key is you've got to get those first downs to stay on the field for the tempo to take effect. Otherwise, uh, it could be, you know, it can hurt you. What challenges uh, do uh, does Phil Bennett's defense present to you guys? I don't know many guys with more experience than Phil. I mean, I got a lot of respect for him. Um, enjoyed getting to talk with him some over the summer. And, uh you know, I begged him to take it easy on us. But, you know, I mean, you guys almost coached 40 years, a lot of places, a lot of big-time ball. I think what he gives them is is a steady, confident, consistent voice over there. You can tell what they did last year on defense. Um, he really settled them in. And like I said, they're a lot better unit even this year, going into year two of what he's doing. Uh, they've got some really good veteran guys, especially that, that middle linebacker number one can really play. And, and they've got a lot of guys that just, again, know what they're trying to do. And that's why I go back to saying they have an identity. They know who they are, and there's a lot of power in that. Trey Siggers is a guy that kind of came in last year and was leading rusher, very everything that they wanted from him. I guess how much of a just leader and calming. It seems like he kind of is like yeah. a go-to. You know what you're getting, guy. He, he's very consistent, very uh, easy to understand what you're going to get. You know, he's pretty much the same guy every day, and it's been good. We didn't see him in the spring, We've seen him this fall. Um, he's been kind of what we thought. He's been very set, steady, very consistent, and he's not a big talker. He just goes out and, and he just uh, he shows guys how to do it right. Bo Corrales, is there any update maybe on? on yeah, his um, it's it's going to be week to week, but but he won't be available this week. Any other guys you can share who won't be available or? Uh, we got some time? guys that are game time decisions, and for obvious reasons, we'll we'll wait till game time on that. Yeah, really, it wasn't my decision. We let the guys vote. You know. Um, I think I told them today I got hired. It's their team. It's just my job to lead it. So we let them vote, and it was pretty unanimous. Um, they, you know, wanted Tanner and Jimmy were unanimous, really, really unanimous. And then the next guys were Rasheed and Elijah. And so I think all four of those guys, the team spoke. Those are the guys that they believed in and wanted to, to be their leaders and be their captains. And then Austin got a lot of votes, but Austin also it was kind of a unique deal. Obviously, we did decide to give him the Jerry Levi's jersey. We had a bunch of guys that were – uh, I think worthy of it, but you look at a guy who's been here six years through three head coaches, changed positions. If if anybody exemplifies what Jerry did and had opportunities to quit a bunch of times, Austin does that. And and then I'll give credit to our our captains. They said, hey, we need a special teams captain. It needs to be Austin, and so that's why we have five. With Austin, you know, he mentioned that the thought briefly crosses my mind. Like, you know, maybe Dodge will take advantage of this last season because of the COVID rule. 
I guess, what was your first initial conversations with him? And I guess, how quickly did you see, like, this is a guy that's earning his place? Yeah, you know, I'm. it's why you coach. I couldn't be more proud of Austin. I was here um, when he was young. He was like a redshirt freshman quarterback. He was our third quarterback both of my years pretty much. Uh, was starting to transition to wide out as I was leaving. And, um, you know, he had a, he had an up and down road the two years I was here. And so to see what he's been able to do over the last two years, one of those years being COVID and just how he's not only made the transition and not quit, but like he's thriving. He's one of our best special teams players. He's now in our two deeper wide out. I just think, um, you know, our players believe in him. I'm just really proud of him. And, and yes, when I got the job, we sat on and talked and he wasn't sure. Um, you know, and I wasn't sure what he was going to do, but like a lot of the guys he chose, you know, and I want to come back and play and we're really glad he did. Have you worked out where guys are going to be in the box or on the field and things like that? Yeah, uh, we have. I know Coach Simons uh, and Coach Woods will be up in the box. Um, and then myself and a, and a majority of the other on-the-field coaches will be on the sidelines. I can't say, is, is Bushev, the punter? <laughs> Bushevsky, yeah. Bushevsky, yeah, that's a lot easier than I thought. Uh, obviously earning a starting job. I mean, Terrence's ACL in 2021. What did you see from him? Again, there's consistency there, experience. I know Coach Niver's got a good relationship with him. I've been impressed with Brennan Hall. He can really boot it, too. So we do feel like we've got three guys that are our specialists, both place kicking, kickoff, punting, that can do a really good job in their role. But also we've got, if we have an issue, we've got backups at all three spots, too. But, but Ryan just gives us a guy who's been there and done that, and he's fully healed, and I think he's got a lot of confidence. Is, is Brennan a guy you could foresee if you need a big boot field goal? Being... I think it's possible. I mean, he's definitely got the leg. Um, and, and he's getting more consistent, so I think it's possible, yeah.